Hey guys, Quiff the Lazy Geek here and welcome back to the channel. A few weeks ago, I tested this telescope here that was provided on loan to me by Founder Optics. So this is a 106 millimeter aperture telescope and it has a native focal length of 636 millimeters, meaning it has a focal ratio of f6 natively, which is nice. And in the previous video, I used it with its field flattener that came with the telescope and that has a two inch eye piece barrel at an end, which I inserted within like the two inch uh, eyepiece holder here at the back of the telescope. The results were okay, but I did notice that there was some tilt in the image that I was really not able to fix and sometimes just like reseeding the flattener actually helped with the tilt. So what could be done about this tilt? I asked uh, Founder Optics and they told me they actually have threaded adapters for both the flattener and also also the focal reducer that they make available for this telescope. So they sent me those uh, threaded adapters. This is the one for the reducer, this is the one for the flattener, and they also sent me the focal reducer so I could have a spin on it and see how well it works. And so we have tons of stuff to test out. So the problem is we are in the rainy season and uh, while right now in the morning it's beautiful weather, uh, it typically gets really cloudy and even rainy at night. And uh, last night I was actually able to take some exposures with both the red reducer and the flattener with the threaded adapters. So I'll be able to show you how those look like uh, a bit later in this video. And I had to uh, dodge some thunderstorms while doing so. So yeah, that was fun. Anyway, how does it work? So we have the field flattener here and I have the threaded adapter for the field flattener. The threaded adapter costs 55 US dollars and honestly, I feel like it should be provided by default with the telescope because I do think it will help achieve better and more reliable results. This is a massive little piece of uh, green metal, just like uh, the rest. And just like with the telescope, we actually have a decent user manual that explains everything about setting up the adapter. I actually really like that. It's a small detail, but I've seen so many adapters and bought so many adapters where like the vendor or the manufacturer just assumes you know what you're doing. And it's not always the case. <laughs> So having manuals and documentation is something that I really appreciate and it was the same for the telescope itself. So how do we install this uh, threaded adapter? So we're going to take the field flattener, remove effectively the, uh, the two inch eyepiece kind of adapter or a barrel and replace it with the threaded adapter. Then we can remove this black ring here on the telescope and install our field flattener in its stead. And this obviously is a much more stable way of fixing a field flattener or a focal reducer to the telescope. Uh, at the end of my field flattener, which is just like in the other video, we have two adapters available, M48 and M42. Uh, my camera right now with the ZW filter drawer uses M48. And so the only thing I need to do next is to remove the cover and install the camera assembly. And here we are with the fully threaded uh, system. Instead of having a barrel like that that's inserted into a two inch eyepiece holder, we have something that is fully threaded, which obviously removes a lot of guesswork. The way that I'm setting this up as well is I'm setting this up with the most vanilla uh, lazy setup possible in that I'm using the ZW um, filter uh, drawer together with the ZW, I believe, 16.5 millimeter adapter with my Topetech camera that has the same 17.5 millimeter back focus as the ZW cameras with APS-C size sensors. And so I'm using like the, the laziest, the out of the box kind of spacing. And that's on purpose. That is so that I can see what the result is going to be without any adjustments, without trying anything, just like reading the instructions and putting it all together. So that's the strategy behind my testing. I want to try something very simple without having to do like any finicking around with the equipment. Okay, let's have a quick look at the focal reducer. The focal reducer is a 0 0.8 focal reducer, so it will reduce the focal ratio from f6 to f4.8, which is pretty good. And the focal length will be reduced from 636 millimeters to around 509 millimeters. 
which is still a pretty decent focal length uh, to, to image with, especially in summer with all of those uh, very wide field nebulae available to us. Uh, focal reducer has its own threaded adapter, and this is because the, threads, the threads inside the reducer and inside the flattener are different. So here we have the adapter. It looks very much the same, uh, but it's not. The threads are different. There are no markings that I can tell uh, that tell me the difference between the threaded adapter for the flattener and for the reducer. So you have to just try and see if the threads match. I feel like there should be some markings like for reducer or for flattener uh, founder optics. So that it's easier to figure out, you know, which is which if you happen to own both. Just a little suggestion. So and attaching the focal reducer is exactly the same as the field flattener. We remove the two inch barrel here. We thread it into the threaded adapter. And then we can thread that into the telescope, just like before. And just like the field flattener, the focal reducer comes the, by default with two adapters, one M42 adapter, which is mounted on by default, and an M48 adapter, which I mounted instead because I use M48 threads with my uh, filter wheel or my filter drawer here. And I think it's good to have those options available to us like M42 versus M48. And I think like overall, the biggest strength of this telescope that I've seen until I tested this, so we're gonna look at the resulting images together, but has been the mechanics. Yesterday, as I was like hurrying up between thunderstorms to take some quick star field images with both the field flattener and the focal reducer, I used my Batsnav mask to uh, focus the, the telescope. And the focuser was really, really precise, allowing me to really get perfect focus. And at the same time, the focus knob, the lock, focus here at the bottom was perfect. Like it, it was able to like lock in the focus with no shift whatsoever, either of the image or the focus. That was really, really good. I really like mechanically how that scope is. So now that we have a proper mechanical attachment between the scope and the field flattener and the focal reducer as well, which of course also acts as a flattener, Let's see what the results are going to be, optically speaking. Okay, let's have a look at the results after I took some test exposures with both the flattener and the reducer. So I targeted the M27. I did some five second exposures just so that we could see the stars. I'm just going to focus on the star shapes. Um, the Obviously, as I was saying, it was between thunderstorms. There was a lot of wind, so I was like looking for the periods when the wind died down. Uh, it was a bit uh, sporty <laughs> in terms terms of astrophotography. So yeah, maybe I'll do some more tests uh, later, but for now I think we have uh, some good references in terms of the uh, stars. On the left hand side we have the flattened uh, image and on the right hand side we have the reduced and flattened image. So field flattener on the, uh, on the left, focal reducer and flattener on the right. N27 in the center of each. Uh, so this is a single five second exposure. And let's have a quick look at the uh, flattener image. So flattener image, if you look at the center, it's perfectly fine, per perfectly decent. And if we go to the right hand side, uh, it's also very well controlled. I don't see uh, like any misshapen stars or anything like that. This looks pretty good to me. Uh, and if we go to the bottom left, we do get a little bit of star elongation. And if we go even more to top left, we see some more star elongation, but this is better controlled than what I saw when I didn't have the threaded adapter. If you do zoom out to some reasonable level, like this is probably a level of crop that I'd be fine with doing on this, uh, on this scope, I really can't tell that, okay, like if I know in advance that the stars here are streaks, then I can tell otherwise it's like not that visible. So I think it's, uh, it's reasonable. So this is with the flattener that comes with the telescope. The telescope I double checked is 2,399 US dollars. This includes the flattener. And once you add the threaded adapter, that's an additional 55 US dollars. So you're at around uh, 2,000 
450 US dollars. So same price range as ASCAR telescopes or NAR ZW telescopes of the same uh, size. Although I do believe the mechanics of the founder optics scopes are really 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 good that's what's really impressing me the most with this telescope absolutely beautiful focuser uh, focusing stop mechanism the several screws on the lens hood there's so much attention to detail that i really really like and now we see that the results once you have the threaded adapter are really decent and honestly that threaded adapter it should be part of the package it's just 55 us dollars founder of the optics just include it Included with the package. Now let's have a look at the reducer. The reducer itself was 135 US dollars, and then you add the adapter, the threaded adapter, which again I think should be a required purchase for an additional 55 US dollars. So we are at 190 US dollars effectively for the reducer. Again, Founder Optics, I believe you should have a package threaded adapter plus reducer together so that uh, astro imagers don't have to pull their hair out because of tilt. Let's have a look at the reducer uh, results. Um, so center of the frame perfectly fine. Then we'll go to the right hand side we see some elongation but what's very interesting is that we see that elongation like in the, uh, the direction that is perpendicular to the lines that come from the center. And we see that actually all across the uh, the frame. So I'll go back to the top right here. And then top left, we have like the opposite direction. Just the left, it's fairly round actually. On just the left hand side, we're looking good. And bottom left, we have some elongation as well. So uh, this looks like an issue that could be solved with spacing. Uh, in that my camera sensor looks like it is slightly too far away so uh, it's a small thing and I feel like this is uh, fixable I might try out with some spacing stuff but as I was mentioning earlier in the video I'm like doing the simplest thing possible because I'm lazy I don't want to have to deal with so many equipment issues so I'm taking the recommended stuff like the ZW filter wheel adapter the ZW spacer we get 55 millimeters this is also what people would get with a DSLR with a T-ring you just get your 55 millimeters distance and you ought to want to care about it and without any you know enhancement, any tilt adjustment, any distance ad adjustment without any adjustments whatsoever, this is what we get. And for both the flattener and the reducer, I believe this is damn good because once you're zoomed out, as long as you're not pixel peeping, and remember pixel peeping is a bad habit, uh, then like the, the images are perfectly fine. Now I'm back at the zoom level that I'd be comfortable cropping to, like it's almost, I'm, I only see like less than one quarter of the image. On the reducer at a time and yet like those misshapen stars they're they're not appearing misshapen at all like this you if you know what you're looking for you can tell there is slight elongation in the stars but really not much and this is how things look like with an aberration inspector uh, on the left hand side we have the flattener on the right hand side we have the reducer and this is like perfectly decent results for the uh, flattener and in a way at least at that zoom level I even prefer the results of the reducer so the reducer is really controlling things pretty well I don't really see any issues and again I used the threaded adapter which should absolutely be included as a package with the reducer so that really concludes my optical testing of the FOT 106 by Founder Optics which is a good alternative to things like ASCAR ZW and other scopes in the 106 millimeters uh, aperture range with an f6 native focal ratio with the reducer you're at f4.8 that's really good especially with the star shapes that we're seeing and if you're willing to play with the distance you'll get even better results again the mechanics of the founder optics are really beautiful and overall i do think it is a pretty decent package and after all, like I'm presenting those, those results so that you can be the judge as to whether this telescope with the threaded adapters and maybe the focal reducer 
can be the right choice for you. You're the one to decide based on the uh, optical results that I provided here. Let me know if you want to run some more tests, but as it is, I'm satisfied with what I'm seeing. Now, I want to quickly thank my Patreon members and channel members for supporting me for making this video possible. If you want to support me, I have links in the description. Every little bit helps, of course, just by watching the video, leaving a comment, liking or even disliking the video, you're going to help out. So please do so. Please interact with the video. Please leave a comment. Please watch. Please tell your friends, etc., etc. Engagement is everything on YouTube. With that, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget whenever you can to look up at the stars and I'll see you next time.